Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be covering recipe serializers, which allows us to create our own JSON recipe type. A couple of episodes ago, we created an event that gives us a diamond if we throw something when we stand on an example block. Today, I'm going to be making it so that we can create a recipe which tells us what block we have to stand on and what item we have to throw, and then give us a different output as a result. So let's begin. In our common package, let's create another new package called .recipe. And in here, let's create a new class called example recipe. And this is going to implement I recipe of I inventory. Let's press Control Shift O to import I inventory. And then we need to add some methods into this class to remove this error. However, first inside here, let's create a private static class. And this is going to be called serializer. And this is going to extend a forge registry entry of any I recipe serializer. And it's going to implement an I recipe serializer of our example recipe. So next, let's create a constructor like so. And we actually don't need this to be public. And in here, we can set the registry name with this dot set registry name. And then we can pass in the mod ID and the name. So let's do tutorial mod dot mod ID. And then as the name, we can have example underscore recipe. Next, after the constructor, we need to add a read method. So first, let's read using a JSON object. And we also need a method for reading with the packet buffer and a method for writing to the packet buffer. And we can fill these methods out later. So at the top, let's create a public static final serializer. And we can call this serializer. We can set it to a new serializer. Then we need the fields for our recipes. So let's create a private final ingredient input, a private final item stack output, a private final block, which is going to be the block that we stand on, and a private final resource location, which is going to be the ID. Then let's press Control Shift O to import all of these and make sure we select net.minecraft.block. And now we need to initialize these. So let's create a example recipe constructor. And this is going to take a resource location ID, an ingredient input, an item stack output, and a block block. And then all we need to do in this constructor is set this dot ID equal to the ID that's passed in and so on for all the other values. And there we go. Now that we've removed all these errors, we can fill in these functions down here. So first let's create a final JSON element and we're going to call this input element and we're going to set it equal to JSON utils dot is JSON array. And then we can pass in the JSON object and then the JSON here is going to be input. And if it is, we're going to get the JSON array. So utils dot get JSON array of JSON and input and otherwise we need to get the JSON objects. So JSON utils dot get JSON object of JSON and input. Then let's press control shift O to import JSON element. And then we can get the final ingredient input and we're going to set it equal to ingredient dot deserialize the input element. Next we need to get the output. So let's do final item snack output is equal to shaped recipe dot deserialize item. Then we need to get the JSON object. So we can do JSON utils dot get JSON object. And then we can pass in just JSON. And this time instead of input is going to be output. Next, we need to get the block. So let's do final block block is equal to forge registries dot blocks dot get value and then we need to pass in the resource location key, which is going to be a new resource location and then we need to pass in the value from the JSON object. So we can do JSON utils dot get string of JSON and block. Next, we need to check if the block actually exists. So we're going to say if block is equal to null, let's throw a new illegal state exception saying block plus block dot to string does not exist. And finally, we can return a new example recipe using the constructor we made above. So let's pass in the recipe ID, input, output, and block. Let's just change this to block does not exist because we're only going to output this error if the block is null. So next, let's do a final ingredient input, and we're going to set this equal to ingredient.read buffer. Then we can do a final item stack, stack, and we're going to set that equal to 
buffer.readItem stack. Then a final block block, which is going to be equal to forge registries.blocks dot get value of buffer dot read resource location then once again we can copy all of this down here next in right we can do recipe dot input dot write to the buffer then we can do buffer dot write item stack of recipe dot output and then buffer dot write resource location of recipe dot block dot get registry name and we want to make sure that we do this in the same order as we read. And that's it for our serializer. Now we can add some methods into our class. So first let's do dot matches and we can return this dot input dot test of inventory dot get stack and slot zero. Then we can get the crafting result and we want to do this dot output dot copy. And this is important because if we just use the output it would use up the item stack in this class. So if we create a copy, then this item stack will remain here. If we just want the item stack to be used from the recipe, we can do get recipe output and then just return this dot output. Then let's override two more functions, get ID, we're going to return this dot ID and get serializer, we're going to return this dot serializer. Next, let's override get type and we're going to return recipe in it, which is a class we haven't made yet, dot example recipe. And for the recipe icon, I'm just going to return a new item stack of our item in it dot example item dot get finally let's create a public boolean called is valid and we're going to pass in an item stack input and a block block and then let's return this dot input dot test input and block is equal to this dot block finally we just need to override can fit and we're just going to return true since this isn't in a crafting table next let's create another class so let's create a new class called example recipe type and this is going to implement i recipe type of example recipe and let's press Control shift o to import that then let's override to string and all we are going to do is return tutorial mod dot mod id plus colon and then we want to put example underscore recipe which is the same thing as we put over here so let's save that and that's it for this class. Now let's make our recipe init class. So let's create a public static final i recipe type of example recipe. And let's call this example underscore recipe. And let's set it equal to a new example recipe type. So now if we go back here and import all the errors in this class should be fixed. Now let's create a public static void called register recipes. And this is going to take a register of I recipe serializers of anything called event. And let's create a private static void. And then we're just going to call this register recipe. And this is also going to take the event, but also an I recipe type of any recipe and an I recipe serializer of any recipe. And we're going to do registry.register. I'm going to do registry.recipe types. Then we're going to create a new resource location of type.toString. And then we can just pass in the type. Then we can do event.getRegistry.register and then just pass in the serializer. Now all we have to do is for every recipe type up here, we can call register recipes with the event, example recipe, and example recipe dot serializer. Finally, all we need to do is call this register recipes function in our main class. So let's do bus dot add generic listener to i recipe serializer dot class, and then we can pass in recipe init colon colon register recipe and then let's import and there we go however to use this in code we're going to have to create another method in our recipe init so let's create a public map of a resource location to i recipe and we're going to call this get recipes then let's press Control shift o to import java.util.map and in here we're going to pass in a couple of values so we're going to pass in the i recipe type type and the recipe manager 
manager. Then let's create another final map of I recipe type, any recipe, to another map of resource locations to I recipe of any recipe. And we're going to call this recipes. I'm going to set it equal to obfuscation reflection helper dot get private value of recipe manager dot class manager. And then we need the ID of the field. So if we go into recipe manager dot class, the private value we need to get is this recipes. So we can go into my Discord server and do estimation mark MCP recipe manager dot recipes. And here is our recipes. So the value that we're going to need is field 199522D. So let's copy this, go into here and write this as a string. And now we can get that value. And finally, we can just return recipes.get type. So now in our player events, we have the player, the state, and let's get the item thrown. So let's do item item is equal to event dot get entity item dot get item dot get item. And then let's import item from net.minecraft.item. Then in here, let's loop over all the recipes in our registry. And we want to make sure this function is static so that we can get it from this class. So that in here we can do recipe init dot get recipes for recipe init dot example recipe. And then world dot get recipe manager then we can go out of bracket and do dot value like so so now for each recipe let's convert it into a example recipe example recipe is equal to example recipe of recipe let's change this item to an item stack so we can just do that by changing it to an item stack and removing the last get item and then we can check if example recipe dot is valid then we pass in the item and then state dot get block. Then let's do item handler helper dot give item to player. And then we pass in the player and then we just need to do recipe dot get recipe output dot copy. Then we need to destroy the item entity because obviously we don't want it to remain there. So we can do event dot get entity dot remove. And that's it for the Java. Now let's have a look at creating a recipe. So let's create a new file in our recipes package. And we're going to call this example recipe one dot json. And just like any other recipe, we need to define the type. And this is going to be tutorial mod colon example recipe. Then let's pass in the block. So let's do Minecraft stone. Then we need the input. So let's open brackets and then we need to give it an item. So let's say we're going to throw a example item. And then we need an output. And let's say I'm going to give myself diamonds. So let's do Minecraft colon diamond. And then let's give us three diamonds. So let's do count three. And that's it for our recipe. So now let's run the game. So now if we go into a game and stand on stone and hold an example item and throw it, we get given three diamonds. And there we go. Now we have a working example recipe type. Thank you for watching. If you need any help, join the Discord. And in the next episode, we'll be covering the build.gradle file.